All right, so let's talk about our RD tool here. This is the process in which LibreNMS stores uh, data to generate these graphs. Uh, each one of these graphs you see here is a different RRD file, uh, most likely. Uh, some of these might be combined into one, but for the most part, you will see uh, when we look at the uh, OS, uh, the directory where these are stored, that pretty much all these are a different um, RRD file. And so what that means is that when we were running these scripts to pull uh, data here, as we saw in the past, it runs through and does all these stuff. It actually goes and writes to these RRD files in this process too. And I believe in the last video I said that you could see it writing to the RRD files, but I believe when they ran uh, whatever is running right here, they didn't put the proper uh, parameters in to do that. So we can actually do that ourselves uh, in the command prompt here. Um, and you can actually see it writing to the uh, um, RRD file. So if you're just in your uh, home directory under the LibreNMS user, you can run this polar command, which is pretty much the exact same thing as when you hit polar here and run. You're doing the same thing here. In fact, this script output, when you hit return here, is what you see on the screen here. It's just that they forgot one flag that we're going to put on the command line here to see actually it writing to the RRD files. So uh, if you type in host here, we're going to pull this host, and we're going to do D for debug and V for verbose. I don't know which one they're missing, but they're missing one of those. They should probably put that in. Uh, so anyways, we can hit pull here, blah, 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 a whole bunch of stuff happen. But you'll see here that, uh, let's find one, maybe MTP. MTP. I don't think I have MTP running there. I wanted to find one that actually has some data, but it probably doesn't really matter for the uh, uh, wireless stuff. Um, but anyways, you can see here that uh, this is probably my uh, yeah, hard disk here. Uh, so it pulled the hard disk information, a whole bunch of different stats in here. But at some point here, it actually updated the actual RRD file where all these stats are stored. Uh, some of these are st stored in the database also, um, but that's mostly just for looking at what it is right now uh, and alerting on that value. Uh, anything you alert on in LibreNMS is going to be a database value. These RRDs are just for writing the graph data. That is it. Uh, so if you can see here, uh, we did a bunch of stuff to this hard disk and we wrote it to this file right here. Uh, and that ran perfectly fine. Um, I also want to say it's okay. It's interesting. I don't know why it's missing a thing there because it should say this. It should say you're updating the RRD file and it's outputting okay. So I'm, I don't know why it's not saying that. Maybe maybe this there's just something missing for this particular one because uh, it looks like all the other ones did it. So anyways, you just basically if you're if you're wondering if your RRD files are updating, uh, you'd want to run this and look for this updating this file. And you, if you're also having a problem with the graph, you know exactly where it's going. Um, the other thing you can do is actually just look in this directory here. And you will see all the devices uh, in the LibreNMS RRD directory. You can see it right here. Uh, you can see you'll have every single device here by the host name. So this is an IP address because I, I was adding them by an IP address, but you could add them by host name too, and you would see those in here. And if you go into one of these, these are all the RRD files in here. Uh, so you can see there's all sorts of different ones. Storage, CPU, processor, performance counters, all sorts of different ones in here. Um, so this is also where you can look, and you could just look at the last time it was updated uh, to make sure that it's that, that it's updating. Okay, so now this works perfectly fine for a single install. Um, you you don't have really that many devices. Uh, you're just you know monitoring a handful, and you just want to have it all in one box. It would work perfectly fine like this, and you might not notice any issues at all. Um, and you can keep it running like this. But eventually, if you start adding hundreds and thousands of devices, for every time it pulls, it has to write to every single one of these files every time it pulls. And if you have hundreds of devices. I mean, you're talking about tens and thousands of um, files it's going to have to write to every single time it pulls. And you can understand that the disk is can't just write to all those at the same time. It's going to queue it up eventually, um, especially with spinning disks. Uh, with SSDs and NVMe uh, disks, uh, it can obviously uh, write it a lot faster. So you might not notice that issue uh, as much or as soon with those types of disks. 
So um, one of the key things here is to, you know, ex extend that limit of the physical hard disk is actually putting a little buffer in front of that. And that buffer is called RRD cache D. Um, and what that does is it basically takes these when the polar runs and it wants to write to the file instead of writing to the file it's going to write to a, a service running on the computer um, and it will store that update in RAM um, and after a certain amount of time it will flush it back to the file here um, so what that means is that you don't every time it pulls you don't really have a lot of uh, things writing uh, to the disk it's all writing in memory to this to this cache uh, caching RRD cache. <laughs> uh, so uh, once after a certain amount of time, it's going to write it. But you know, right when you start RRD cache, they're all going to be in there. So you say, well, that's just delaying the problem. You know, if it writes it in 15 minutes from now, they're all going to write. Well, it, it's going to start writing a couple of them, but it basically has a random timer in there um, to not write them all at the same time. It'll just write a couple and, and spread it out uh, here and there. Uh, so eventually it'll write, but it won't it won't schedule them all to write at the same time. Uh, so the issue, the real the real issue with that is that you're going to lose maybe up to 15 um, you know minutes of data if something happens in that time period. Um, to be honest, if you <laughs> if you have something major happen like that where the RRD cache service crashed, I mean you're going to be looking at uh, some some messed up graphs anyway. So probably 15 minutes is not going to be a deal breaker. But uh, there is a journaling feature for it, um, and we'll enable that too. But um, let's go ahead and get that installed here because. Uh, that that'll help us a lot um, in in the disk I/O issues. So if we go to our RD cache D here uh, in the docs, we can see that there's a couple um, settings we need to set in our config. Uh, file. Now you remember in my other video I said if you're looking at these config options they want you to set it in the config.php first you want to look and make sure that you can't set this option in the global settings uh, and I know for a fact already that you can set that option in here uh, it would be under here under polar and rrd tool uh, so you can set this rrd socket here and what this is is um, when you're running on a local machine and you have this service installed on the local machine, it really doesn't need to talk over the network or anything. You can just talk to it locally uh, right on the same socket it's running on. But now if you're using distributed polling um, where you have other pollers on other machines, they when they finish this polar run, uh, you know, when that runs that script, uh, it needs to send off its RRD stuff, uh, you know, its RRD data somewhere. Uh, so what it does is it basically sends it to an IP address uh, that this we will have running on our computer, um, the RRD server, cache D server. So for now, we're just going to put on the local host just so we can get RRD cache D working. Um, so we want to install it. Okay, one dot. They want me to put the version in here. Can I put I put the version in here? Okay, we'll come back to the version. I don't know why you can't put the version in here, but it might have put it in automatically for me. So let me. Uh, we just got to go down here now. This says RRD cache installation for Ubuntu 16, but I've tried it with 17, 18, 19, 20. I don't even know if there was a 17. I kind of got into Ubuntu at uh, around 18. Um, so uh, yeah, this um, this will still work fine. This all works fine for Ubuntu uh, 20. So let's just install it here. Well, let me go. Let me exit out of my Libyan MS user. So this this what we're doing here really has nothing to do with Libyan MS at all. This is a totally separate service uh, running on the uh, server. So you really don't have to do anything with like the Libyan MS user or anything like that. Uh, I guess you are going to have to assign the files uh, this journaling okay that journaling file to the Libyan MS user that's fine okay so we want to go and edit this file in here but we're gonna copy and paste what this is in here for because most of this stuff is exactly what we want um, and basically these timeout and jitter these are the um, this is in seconds I believe is that 1800 seconds Yeah, every 30 minutes. So basically what's happening, uh, these two things here are what, what I said was the buffer. 
Uh, so when you first start this thing, it's going to start counting down to 30 minutes. Um, and anything from when I start it till the 30 minutes is going to get saved into RAM. After that 30 minutes, it's going to tell it to write out all the uh, data it has in memory uh, over the next half an hour. Um, so you basically don't schedule it right all the second. Just you have a half an hour to write all of it, so schedule it how you want it. Um, so these are what these two values are playing for. So um, if, you, if you notice that you install this and you're still having disk I.O. issues, you can actually just increase this even more. Um, so you actually had to do it to an hour uh, even to, to basically buffer it for an hour and then all that stuff you have buffered, write it out over an hour. Uh, and that seemed to get rid of the graph. So you can always continuously uh, really scale this up to whatever. It's just the amount of memory you have on your system is going to be the limiting factor. So uh, just... Uh, the, the defaults are probably fine if you have good uh, hard drives or SSDs or NVMEs. All right, so we're going to save that here. Let's see. And we want to fix the permissions on this file. This journaling file is basically a fail-safe, so if it does crash, it, I, I kind of don't understand that. It, that's one I want to have to talk about because it's writing the updates to a, a file here on the disk. But if it's writing the updates, and, this, and it's writing them here, so in case it crashes, it, it has a place to save. So the next time it starts up, it'll read these files and write them to the right location. But, you know, the whole reason you, you have our, our Dcache D is to not write them right away to the disk. You want to write them to memory first. So if you're writing them right away to the disk, I, this is actually kind of making it worse because you're writing it here and you're also writing it to the RRD file. So I didn't really understand... Um, why this is here now yeah, i guess you could create like a um, ram disk and put it in there but then you kind of have the same issue i guess i guess if our rd did crash it would still be on the ram disk so you'd probably be fine there so that that might make sense to do something like that but if you're just going to put it on the hard drive where you're actually writing the rrd files uh, that doesn't make any sense to me at all in fact i think that would make it worse if you had that enabled but for our simple tests we're just going to keep it there because uh, we, we don't have that many devices, and you, you're really not going to have problems with any of this stuff I'm talking about until you get into the hundreds and thousands of devices. Um, so uh, if you're just a small little setup, you don't really have to worry about much of this, but you would, you'd probably still want to install this because it does, um, does take a lot of load off of the hard disk. Uh, so we're going to restart this. So now we can just check this service to see if it actually likes everything we did. You know what? That's not going to work because I haven't installed. Um, I haven't even installed though. Oh, it is installed. So, oh, because I spelt it wrong. There's always something. Permission denied. Not owned by Damon user. Okay, so that's probably because as they de uh, I started it with this guy. Okay, it's still started, but it can't re write to the journal directly, I don't believe. So let's go ahead and save this, and let's see if it actually works. Uh, we want to do this for listening to the local machine right here. Okay, so that should have been enough to get the devices talking to RRD cache D now. So let's go to all devices. Uh, let's just look at one of these graphs here. We'll look at the processing graph. And this is a good uh, way of actually seeing what the RRD command was. Because, um, you know, as I said in the beginning of the video, all this data in here is stored in a file, but you have to generate that data to a graph, and RRD tool also does that. And if you do this show RRD command, you can actually see the command it ran right here. Um, and you can see at the very end here, it's trying, it's going to do all this, but it's going to send all this command to a daemon running right here. Uh, so that means that it did talk to our RD cache D service uh, and generated this graph. So now uh, when it writes there, it's going to be writing to there. And uh, when it generates graph, it's going to be reading to there. So you can also write and read. Um, and that gets really helpful with distributed polling. All right, that just about does it for RD. So we'll end the video there.